Amen. We welcome everybody once again to uh, Campus Crave. We celebrated one baptism last night. Let's give Jesus Christ a baptism. And we're going to continue celebrating for the rest of this afternoon. We had a great time. I experienced my first college uh, party last night. <laughs> and we had fruit punch and orange juice and leftover sandwiches and everything else that goes with it. We had a good time. It was very relaxing. And it was crazy. You CW students are crazy. You dub has nothing on you. <laughs> right? <laughs> UW has nothing on you. We thank God. And today we're going to talk about God cares. Sister Danielle, if you're ready, you can post that first slide there. God cares, and it matters to him. God cares. tell the there's a picture of a guy sitting there God cares it matters to him and it's a modern I call this dude a modern day Adam and pretty much he's sitting there casual with his head down or with an apple uh, in his hand and God cared from the beginning when mankind was created he cared he cared for us so much that he created a purpose he created our lives he created a divine purpose in our lives that we may elevate, get a higher education, get a career going on, make some moolah, and uh, get a nice house in the hills and a nice car, what have you, but God cared. Now, when sin entered into humanity, sin kind of ruined it for us. Sin ruined it us. And sin with that apple, that represents the fruit that Adam and Eve took a bite into that, were, that was forbidden. And we got to understand that when sin entered into our lives, we have to understand that we were made in his likeness. So if we were made in his likeness, perfection was upon us. And it was a natural perfection. It was already programmed, if you would, in us. We did not have to pursue perfection. We did not have to pursue righteousness. We did not have to pursue holiness. It was already created in us. But sin ruined it for us. So what happened? The first Adam came in, sin ruined it. We all know the story. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created terrain. God created the sky, the birds, the sea, the good seafood in the ocean. God created sushi. That's what he created. God created sushi. God created the lands and the trees and the beautiful evergreens of Washington State. God created the beautiful sunrise, the picturesque sunset. And God created love. Everybody say love. love. God created romance. Even God created sex. God created sex, but in the context of marriage. God created everything that we can enjoy in life. God created Starbucks. I'm kidding. But God created things that we can enjoy. God said in his word, please me first, and I will grant you the desires of thy heart. What does that mean? He's going to take care of everything. He's going to take care of all your financial needs. He's going to take care of all your uh, everything, all your schoolwork, all your college work. All the years that you're putting into to buy a beautiful home one day. All your years to have a good career, to help people, whatever you're majoring in. God created that for you to enjoy and to pursue. But in the midst of all that, we have to be pleasing before God. We have to be admired by God. We have to become God and God's fellowship. We have to have a relationship with God. That's what we need today. Next slide, please. So God cares. We find in De Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11 to 13, very interesting scripture. But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks rain from heaven. It is a land the Lord your God cares for. There we go again. The Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning 
of the year to its ending. So if you faithfully obey the commandments I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve with him with all of your heart, with all your soul. And the verse continues on and it says that I will pour out rain upon the terrain and I will give you um, precious uh, seed and I will uh, raise you up. And that's what the scripture says. Next slide, please. First Kings chapter uh, 17, verse 2 through 6. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, leave here, turn eastward, and hide into the Kirith ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. Now you have to understand the kindness of God. This prophet, the Lord God told him, I will send birds, ravens. Have you ever seen a raven? They're everywhere. They're bothersome too. Ravens. I have sent ravens to take care of you. Ravens will come and feed you. Now let me ask you something. If God told Elijah this and promised him that he will give him meat and food from a raven. How much God cares for you today? He's going to supply every need. He's going to supply your financial needs. He's going to supply your, your physical needs. He's going to supply your emotional needs. He's going to supply every need that you have in your heart. Everything that you're designed from God, he's going to provide it. He is Jehovah Jireh, the provider. He will give you love in the time of need. He will give you peace in the time of need. He will give you rest in the time of need. So that is the type of God we are serving today. Next slide, please. God the creator. Now, some things you may say, you may, uh, that I may say you may not agree upon, but that's why we live in America. That's why we have an opinionated um, system, and everyone's entitled to their opinion. But we believe as followers of Christ that God created us. We go back in Genesis, and we read throughout the chapters, and throughout the whole entire context, that God created us. And sometimes we can't phantom how God created us. It just happened. Time existed before God. The Bible says that one day to the Lord is like a thousand years. So time to him is like dimensional. It's so weird. And also, there's a bunch of mysteries before God. God is a, a, God is a God of full of mysteries. And sometimes we can't figure them out. So you have to be open-minded. You have to say, Lord, help me to understand, but I know you're wonderful. I know you're great. And there's nothing wrong questioning things in the Bible. Nothing wrong with that. There's a difference of believing it and not believing it. There's a difference of believing it and just questioning it. You can be a believer of God. You can say, God is my Savior. I believe him. I am sure founded. I am uh, founded by God's word. I am going to stand substantial before God's word. I'm a believer and I'm a follower, but yea, I have questions. I have questions about God. I have questions how the Virgin Mary got pregnant when she was a virgin. How did that happen? How in the world did that happen? How in the world did that happen? Uh, how did Eve, how did she get created from Adam's rib? I've been working on a project, but I've been typing on my computer, and I came out with some sense of humor that God put some spice in that rib. <laughs> and to you all, you gentlemen, you want to know uh, where the word woman comes from? All right. Huh? All right. You want to know where the, the word woman comes from? Sure. When God created and took out Adam's rib and spiced it up and gave it a good look, he said, whoa, man, that is so beautiful, that is so nice, she is so fine, she's so fine, 